but uh so so um you also do you still own crossfit um trillium is it trivium or yeah, trivium. i'm sorry I'm, I'm a co-owner um my co-owner is uh nate dodd he's uh been crossfitting a long time crossfit changed his life he was like 310 pounds and damn now he's like built like a brick shit house so yeah so what what made you go yeah. into buying a box or actually starting a box you know i i had been accumulated i've been a part of couple boxes i've been coaching and i've managed a couple and then you know i was like starting to accumulate equipment over a period of time to like open my own because i was like this you know this is i can't see myself training another way um, like I want to make this something that is mine. Um, and it just, the opportunity never presented itself to do my own thing. Um, I started coaching at what was then Brentwood Hills. Um, and the opportunity arose that uh, we moved to a new space and, you know, they wanted, uh, someone to come on that had a lot of experience and, you know, I utilized that equipment as my buy-in and, <laughs> you know, here I am. Yeah. So were there like any like pain points at the time when you first opened it to get mm -hmm. clients in or like what, like, how did you get the clients in to actually pay for your rent? Well, I mean, it's, um, it was, it was, it was tough initially. Like we did, we had like kind of like a sublease with someone and that was a really bad relationship. Um, and once we kicked them out, then COVID hit. So it was like, all right, <laughs> Now we're shut down and luckily we were only shut down for five weeks. Um, Williamson County is just a little bit more conservative. Um, yep. so we, we lucked out on that side of things. Um, uh, but like coming out, going into COVID, uh, Nate and I had a really good plan. Uh, we cut, started whittling down class sizes. We made the boxes, we did all that stuff. And then going out of it, we did the same thing, slowly building it back up to our, you know, 15, 16, 17 person classes. But um, we were just really meticulous about it. And I think, you know, the way we handled things, um, we went from like 80 members to, I think we're over 200 now. So, wow. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, he's a great partner to have. Um, he's kind of a tech nerd. Um, so he like, he does a lot of the SEO stuff. He does. I mean, I just, I, I interact. Uh, I don't do a lot of technology stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a really good partnership and, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And you've had some like CrossFit athletes like Brooke Wells, Will Morad, mm -hmm. Alex Smith, um, even Bro uh, Brooks, uh, Sydney Wells as well, as yep. well. And uh, so how did, how did they all of a sudden like come to your gym and like what made them kind of stick for a little while before they, you know, moved on? Well, you know, and Brooke, Brooke and uh, Will are still at the gym. Um, you know, so they're, I was Will's nutrition coach for probably like eight years. Um, he's, just, he's a smart guy. He knows what to do now. He doesn't really need assistance there. He's very analytical. So, um, he's, he's done really well for himself. So I mean, like, I'm not going to argue with him and be like, Oh, you look fat. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, so I still, I work with Brooke. Um, they're still there. We had like street Horner was there. Alex Smith, um, Sid, um, Sydney Michalition was there for a little bit. Um, all the proven people were there before proven, you know, had their headquarters, uh, in Nashville. So, um, you know, I, I think how we handled Brooke during the 2020 games was was awesome. Like it, it we we put on a show for her, um, and that kind of like you know built a relationship that you know she, I don't think she's unless she moves. I don't think she's going anywhere. Um, you know, she she feels at home at Trivium, and and we're lucky to have her. Yeah, and so how do you block off the time from? like them training compared to like your other, other clients that like just are there just to get that hour workout in. So how, how do you manage like those, those schedules? Um, we, we prioritize classes. So our members and our classes always have a priority. Um, when I'm coaching, I coach 1130 is on Fridays usually. <clears throat> and I let everyone know, I'm like, Hey, in five minutes, we have class and no one else is working out during class except for the class. Cause our 1130 class is probably one of our bigger ones. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they've been great about it, you know? So they, they like go have lunch and then they'll come back after class and hit their second, third, whatever, fourth session. Um, there, I mean, I don't even, if someone told me like, Hey, 
you could have a job as just working out all day, I'd be like, nah, like that's, this is a, a stress reliever. I, I don't, I couldn't work out for three, four hours a day. That just doesn't sound enticing. Yeah. But. And and since you're like, you're literally in, in the, you know, in the weeds, not like you're in with them, watching yeah. them do all the workouts and you're just probably sitting there like, God, like how do they have the energy, the stamina, like the endurance, like anything just to last this long. I will tell you the w will is will is special um, because he's been around since he like his first regionals was my first regionals. <laughs> yeah. So like, and he was 18. So now he's 34, like, and he's been in the game six times. Like dude is, it, he's just built different, like mentally, you know? And I think Brooke's the same way. She's just the the mindset they have is, is something that is, I mean, I may have it occasionally, but they have it all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I mean, you must want to really suffer like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and also proven actually opened up their own box in, in Nashville. So is that with, is that bad for your, your box at all? Or is, I mean, I mean, it, it's a good distance away, but like, are yeah. they taking clients away from, from you to, to go there? No, I mean, it's, so like people don't really want to travel outside of like a five mile radius of where they live, where I am. So like, that's, I think that's, that's close to 15 to 20 minutes away. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we didn't really lose anyone. Uh, I know that Sid goes down there and trains because, you know, she's on team proven. Um, so it's, you know, outside of that, I mean, we, we haven't really, you know, I, I wish them well. Um, they utilized our gym for a long time and, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they have their own space now. Have you, have you been there yet? No, no. Do you, do you have any plans of going? No, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, again, I, I don't really like to leave my, my bubble. So, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, going, I don't go down to downtown Nashville. I don't, I don't go down and, and do any of that stuff. So like heading down there, unless like they were doing some sort of MFC, like, promo thing then I, I probably would but uh, i just i'll let them do their thing yeah nashville's getting crazy so i i live about i think like maybe three and a half hours away because i live in like northern part of georgia now yeah. and so it's um but like yeah nashville is just is exploding which is absolutely insane yeah it's um it's kind of, i mean you said you're from north you're living in north georgia i mean it it's like a 10 and you maybe eight year ago, Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. And then like, and now <clears throat> since everyone was living in Atlanta, they're all like, you know, spreading out or even like moving up North. And so it's mm -hmm. just like, there's a, there's a road called 400. It's like an, it's not an interstate, but it's like a highway. And like all of 400 is just like growing and even further up where there's like barely any lights there. It's just like, you literally see like apartments building up like yep. homes. And it's just like, gosh, like where are all these people coming from? Yeah. Well, most of the people coming to Nashville are from California. So um, that's what we've seen. Um, you know, more California plates in our neighborhood than I, I've ever anticipated seeing. I lived yeah. in California for about five years and I'm like, I I personally would would not want to live there again. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, apparently a lot of Californians are, are not wanting to live there either. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, why would they, I mean, the, the whole COVID lockdowns, the, the, the lockdowns and everything were just absolutely insane. And it's, it wasn't even fair for anybody. No, I, I agree with you. It was, it's definitely, it was a different situation uh, in different parts of the country for, for everyone. Like everyone was dealing, like for everyone dealing with the same thing to have to deal with different things constantly. Like it, it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why like even people from like New York or like even mm -hmm. Massachusetts, they were all like moving down to Georgia or Florida or wherever, or yes. like getting out of California. And like, and like, that's where like, I mean, I, I know that's what some of the boom is coming from, but it's just like, yeah. how many more people are coming down? I mean, I don't think we could fit anymore. I think everyone has to go back. <laughs> yes, please. Please do. Please do. Yes. So uh, do you, do you miss the winters at all from being up North to, I mean, you guys still you still get some snow. Yeah, it's uh, it's hit or miss. We we did get one day of snow um, this this past year, um, but it's uh, 
it's hit or miss. And, uh, but I do miss cold weather. I, I enjoy it. Um, my wife is maybe a little less, she's from Santa Monica originally. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, she doesn't really enjoy it. Um, but I think my whole family lives up there. Um, my mom's in Connecticut, my dad's in Maryland. So it's, um, we still get to go up and, and see it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think the, the, um, the straw that broke the camel's back for my wife and I, she was seven months pregnant and I was like over my two week annual tour for the air force. And so she's like full blown pregnant, shoveling snow in New mm -hmm. Hampshire where we were living at the time. And she's like, that's it. Like I am done, done with yeah. this. And so her family lives like, like the town next over from where, where I live now. And like, she's like, yeah, we're moving down South. There's like no ifs, ands or buts. So once this baby's born, we're, we're leaving. Listen, I mean, my wife hasn't given me that ultimatum yet about moving anywhere, but I'd, I'd just listen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had no choice. So yeah. whatever, whatever makes them happy, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. It's fine. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. what I, that's what I did. I was just like, and, and I'm, I'm actually kind of glad because I, I know you being a New Englander too, we typically like to stay in our own little like bubble for me mm -hmm. for like, we like to stay in New England. There's like really don't really venture out and stuff like that. But like, moving to like a whole new location was definitely an eye-opening experience. And like, I don't, I don't regret it at all. Like moving to Georgia. No, I, I mean, I've moved a lot in my life. So it's like, you know, what's one more place, but I've been in Nashville now for, this is the second time I've been in Nashville and it's, you know, I'm going on, gosh, 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's home. It's that, that's where, that's where I feel more home. Like I'm from Rhode Island, but I I'm, my home is in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I, my, I'm, I've been down here for like nine years. So it's like almost like starting to turn over to like, okay, it's, it's Georgia. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, back to your gym. So I know you have like Will Morad, I think, do you still have him programming your, your box for your box at all? Um, no, we actually, we last year, um, we made the decision to just let him train for the games instead of getting us stuff. And, um, he had a lot going on, uh, family wise and stuff mm -hmm. like that with his wife. So, you know, we, we attempted to try to alleviate some of that and we went with, um, we do the proven affiliate program. Okay. How's that? How's that going? It's working out. Everyone seems to like it. So it, all that matters to me is that the members like it and you know, that's, that's number one. Yeah. So what is, what is the big picture of the gym are you looking to like expand to open another box like close by or like what's the what's the goal for i don't know like the next couple of years for for it well i think so we just opened another one um so okay. we have two um and it's it's probably like six miles away but it's just it's just far enough where they're completely separate so we have one there one uh and and they're both right like my house is right in between them so it's perfect Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like ideal, but, um, like we, I mean, we're always open to having those conversations. We'd like to have more. Um, I think that's the way, if you want to make this a business, you, you can't just have one gym. Um, you need, you need multiple. Um, so, and I know Nate is, is Nate definitely wants to make this a business mm -hmm. that, that he, he, that we get paid from. So it's, um, you know, I think that's, that's the key and that's the goal for us. And you know, someday maybe we have three, four or five. 